This video will discuss chapter 10-7, similar triangles. So keep in mind that similar triangles have to have uh, congruent angles, and then they would have to have, their sides would have to be the ratio, would have to be a consistent ratio. So each con uh, corresponding side would have to be uh, similar to the other corresponding sides. We're going to look kind of more at the sides in just a second, but if you take a look at this um, example problem, we're going to try to figure out if these two triangles are in fact similar. And the way that we want to do this is we know that these two angles, angle X and angle Z, would have to be equal. We know that S and Q are currently equal, so that we can either figure out if this angle, angle T, is congruent to angle Y, or we could determine the angles of X and Z. So one way to do it would be, okay, well, I know that these two are congruent, so I know that if I take, let's call this, uh, we don't want to call it X, let's call it A, and A, so I know that A plus A plus 66 equals 180. I know that 2A plus 66 equals 180. I'm then going to subtract 66 from both sides. I've got 2A equals 114. I can then divide by 2, and I know that A will equal 57. So that's one way that I could prove, and then so I know this is 57, and this is 57, making this, these two triangles similar. The other way that I could prove this is I could say, okay, well, I know that 57 plus 57, well, I'm going to run out of space. I'm writing too big. I know that 57 plus 57 plus whatever we want to call this angle, let's call it M, equals 180. I know my handwriting here is atrocious. I apologize for that. I know that 57 plus 57 is 114 plus M equals 180. I could then subtract 114 from both sides and I end up with M equals 66. Now proving that M and that angle T and angle Y are congruent. So either way, I know that these two triangles are similar. And the way that you write the two triangles are similar is you would say triangle X, Y, Z, and then it's just a single squiggly line is congruent to triangle S, T, Q. Making sure that X should be congruent to S, Y should be congruent to T, right? That's how I wrote this, and Z is congruent to Q. Make sure that the order of these triangles, or the order of the angles and sides, actually says what is congruent and similar. All right, now looking at our next problem, I now have these two triangles, and we're trying to figure out are these two triangles congruent? So I'm looking now at this point at this smaller triangle and at this bigger triangle. And so they would be congruent, or I'm sorry, are similar. They would be similar. They're obviously not congruent because they're not the same. But the question is, is this large right triangle similar to this small right triangle? We obviously know that these two angles are the same, but the question is, is and we know that this angle is the same. Well, I'm sorry, we want to know if this angle is the same as this angle. So are these two congruent, and then we want to know is, and then we obviously know that this angle, either way, is going to be congruent. So the question is whether or not this one would work. And so if you were looking just at the sides at this point, then this longer side would have to be similar to this side. So that would be that 9 over 3. So I'm putting the large triangle on top, which you do not necessarily have to do in this ratio. You could have written as 3 over 9. But make sure that if you're putting the smaller top triangle as your numerator, then each time the smaller time triangle should be your numerator. So I'm going to make sure that all of these sides are equal. Um, I then would say the, if we're looking at the hypotenuse, then the larger triangle's hypotenuse is 15. The smaller triangle's hypotenuse is 5. And then looking at this leg, the larger triangle is 12. The smaller, smaller triangle is 4. And so the question is, are these three ratios equal? And you can see that each of them equals 3. Now, if at any point one of these three did not equal 3, so for example, if this number were, say, 13 instead of 12, 
then this one wouldn't be equal. So even though these two are, the fact that the third one is not would make it so they are not similar. However, in this particular example, the triangles are similar. All right, now, how do we find missing values? So in this particular example, we know that 87 and 87 are obviously congruent. We know that 43 and 43 are congruent, meaning that these two triangles would have, or these two angles would have to be congruent. So if this angle is 50, and I know the handwriting is tough to see, it's very light. This is 87, 50, 43, 87, 43, and X. And so I know that X must equal 50. Um, there would obviously be more than one way to, to solve it. The, the most logical way is to say, okay, well, if these two angles are congruent, then these, this third angle would have to be congruent, meaning that X has to be 50. The other way would be to add up these two angles, subtract it from 180, and you would get 50. Now, how do we find A and B? Well, if I know then that these two sides are if you know these two, I've now proven these two are similar, which means the ratio of sides must be the same. So I know that the larger triangle is 24 and the smaller triangle is 8, which means the ratio, if I simplify this, is 3 to 1. So unfortunately, it's the same as the last example. It doesn't always work out to be 3 to 1. But in this particular example, it is. So I can either take this number and divide by 3 or take this number and multiply by three. So if I'm looking at it and multiply, which is probably the easier way, seven times three, this means this will be 21. And then over here, 10 times three, which means A would be 30. So 21, 24, and 30. And then this one is seven, eight, and 10. All right, and then finally, we're gonna take a look at the shadow problem. And so this is a fairly, uh, Typical problem, you've got a person standing here who's casting a shadow of 2.75 feet, and then you've got a flagpole, remember we're talking about the very top of the flagpole, that is casting a shadow of 12 feet, and the question is, how tall is the flagpole? So there are two uh, very logical ways to solve it, and, and, and realistically, it doesn't matter which way you solve this, but one could say, okay, the, the person is 5.5 feet, and the shadow is 2.75 feet. So that means that when I take 5.5 and divide by 2.75, I end up getting 2 over 1. And so this means that the person is twice as tall as the shadow. So I would then say, okay, well, that means that I'm going to say 12 times 2 equals 24 feet. Okay, and that would be one way to solve it. And in this particular example, because this works out to be a really nice, neat number, it works, but there are times when this number is not so nice and neat, and this may not be the, the most logical way to solve it. So another way you could solve it then is to say, okay, well, I know that the, flat, the shadow of the flag is, at, is 12. I know that the height of the flag is X. I know the shadow of the person is 2.75, and I know the height of the person is 5.5. Okay, and then at this point, what I'm going to end up doing is cross-multiplying. So I'm going to go 12 times 5.5. So when I go, or I guess 5.5 times 12, and this is going to be 66. And then over here, I go 2.75 times x. I'm then going to divide 66 by 2.75. So I'm going to divide 2.75 to both sides. And they end up with x equals 24. So you'll notice that either way you solve this, you get to 24. Um, a lot of people fall in love with this first way, but again, remember that if this number was not so nice and neat, if this was a repeating de or a repeating decimal or a long decimal, then it may not make sense to solve it this way. But if it is something where it, it's pretty easy to see, where the shadow is half as long as the person, or the person is twice as as tall as the shadow, then it may make sense to, you know, it's kind of a shortcut. This is probably a way that you may want to think about solving it. Remember, you could also reverse the order. So I could have put X on top and 12, X is the numerator and 12 is the denominator. If you do that, then the 5.5 would have to be the numerator. The 2.75 would have to be the denominator. So I went, this time I went shadow over flagpole, shadow over person, right? Shadow over flagpole, shadow over person. You could have done flagpole over shadow person over shadow, as long as you make sure that the shadows are on the bottom 
and you know the person in the flagpole would have to be on the on the top of the fracture. All right, that's all we got for you today on similar triangles. Thank you very much for watching the video. Don't forget to do the problems on the bottom of the page. See you in class.